We cannot really answer the question why it is collapsing mechanistically, but what we can see is there are several things happening in parallel so we can correlate them. One thing we can see, for example, is that the Southern North Sea is, is warming pretty much. You know, all these uh, scenarios of global warming, two degrees within 100 years, they are on a very, very wide spatial scale. Actually, when you focus down on the regional scale, <clears throat> especially in the shallow areas like the North Sea or also the Baltic, which only has an average depth of 55 meters, warming goes much faster. We can say that with this increased temperature, the whole ecosystem is changing. The timing of the algal blooming and then the timing of the small critters that swim in the water, which are the food for the larval cod, has changed. And we're not sure any longer if the match and mismatch between food for the larvae and these blooms still is so much in tune that they actually uh, work together. So there might have happened a decoupling. In the Baltic Sea, we have uh, had a period of uh, uh, hypoxia, which is uh, when the water seabed gets black because there's no oxygen left. And uh, so all the creatures that were living on the seabed and which are the food for, for the cod, they have been drastically reduced. Fishing pressure certainly has been a factor. Uh, I am not sure if it still is a factor. Uh, it is very difficult to, to disentangle the effects of fishing and the effects of environmental change. And very often they are working together. The general paradigm is that what is most important for the reproduction of the stock is the biomass of fishes that can lay eggs, the so-called spawning stock biomass. What we can regulate is this biomass. Everything that happens afterwards is out of our hands.